Hey, my name is Serge. Welcome to Board Game Detectives, where we test board games to see which one truly deserve your time and money. Games that pass the test can get one of the two colors. Green means that you, as a geek, can play it with anyone. Green games are very approachable. Blue games are not for everyone. You would need other geeks to play them with. And the games that score less than 8.5 out of 10 get red ratings. We do not recommend those games just because there are so many better ones. Today we will review Ra. This game easily gets the green rating. I love this game and highly recommend it. You can play it with anyone. I will give you five reasons why I love this game. But before that, I'll give you one thing that I don't like. Same as you, I often go to Board Game Geek. I scroll through different lists trying to find new games. I've seen Ra hundreds of times, and every time I would just scroll by. The reason is that I do not like the cover. I know it is 100% subjective, but I'm not attracted to it. Also, what I don't like is that. I've been judging the game by its cover, which is wrong. Because of that, I lost years that otherwise I could have spent enjoying this game. On the flip side, my wait possibly was worth it, because at the end I was rewarded by recently released Faro Edition, which is the deluxe version of the game. I know that many will not understand this, but this feels as Christmas to me. I love those plastic pieces. I love those wooden sun tiles. I love the metal coins. All of that makes me happy. It doesn't matter if I win or lose the game. Just playing it, being being a part of this experience is a win for me. I love it so much. Even if you cannot get the deluxe version of the game. The regular one comes with the same nice chunky big wooden raw figure, which I like a lot. Additionally, I will give you five more reasons why you want to play this game. Number one, what I love about Ra is that it has very interesting hidden mechanics that can be explained by behavioral economics, to be more precise, by loss aversion bias. If you like reading, I highly recommend you checking this book, Thinking Fast and Slow, which explains in great details what biases are. I will try to give you a summary what loss aversion bias is. Let's say I offer you a gamble. We will toss a coin, and if it is tails, you will lose $100, Canadian. If it is heads, you will gain $150. Will you accept this gamble? What's interesting, majority of people would say no. The fear of losing $100 is more intense than the hope of gaining $150. They ran a bunch of experiments and they found out that the ratio is 2 to 1. You need to offer $200 of potential benefit in order to compensate for the potential $100 loss. Here I have this fancy chart that illustrates this point and we can see that the psychological value of minus $100 is the same as plus $200. What I love about Ra is that it has the elements of our coin toss gamble. Let me show you. Let's take a look at the player board and uh, all of the scoring options. Here we have gut tile, which is a brilliant luck mitigation mechanics. I love it so much. Then we have our typical Let's call them investment options. This is a short-term investment. You get golden points after each round. And then this is a long-term investment option where you have to build different monuments and then you score at the very end of the game. Majority of games are revolving around those two options. You build your engine and then you start to build those short-term and long-term investments and then you maximize on those points. Ra goes further. Technology. You will lose five points 
if you don't have any. So you are very interested in getting at least one. Pharaoh, you will lose two points if you have less than everyone else. It is nagging at you at all times. Sun points at the end of the round. You will get minus five if you have the least. River is very interesting. At first, it might not look like risk aversion, but then uh, we can also call it as a sunk cost fallacy, which means that if you invest into river tiles, you will be more interested in getting the flood tile, even though there could be a better options on the table. So we can also call it as a risk aversion. You love this river so much that losing the points would be considered as risk for you. So you don't want to lose it, hence it is also risk aversion. So here we go. Four out of seven scoring options are related to risk aversion. And I love this. Majority of players will have no clue that their behavior is irrational. And it's okay. They will still have a lot of fun with this game. However, if you are one of those players who is more advanced, more geeky, and you find this game to be too simple, now you can look at it from a different perspective. Now you know about the risk aversion ratio of 2 to 1, and uh, you know that the players will, will assign higher priority to avoiding the loss versus making some investment gains. And uh, you can have a lot of fun with this knowledge. Number two, what I love about Ra is that there is a lot of interaction between players. Yes, you are taking care of your points and trying to maximize them, but at the same time, you are making sure that your opponents are not getting their points. And it can be done in many ways. For example, you can initiate an auction earlier than everyone was expecting, and it is very annoying, but it puts your opponents in this tricky position. They need to choose whether they need to spend their valuable sons on something that they don't really like, or if they pass, you will get something relatively good for just, let's say, one son, which is also a good outcome. Or if you are in the middle of the bidding, and there are some tiles that you don't really need, but you know that someone else needs them, you can just bid something and you know that another player will increase the bid and will spend more than they were planning. Very fun options. It can be annoying. And yes, some players might not like it because they can perceive this as too confrontational. If you are with such a player group, you might have to adjust your play style. But in general, I find this mechanic very fun and I love it. Number three, what I love about Ra is that it keeps you on your toes. It often feels like musical chairs. In many games, you would pick your strategy and then you will have tunnel vision and just work within that strategy, trying to optimize things and maximize your points. Ra is different. It's like you have 20 small separate games instead of a big one. A lot of changes on the way. Your strategy will be changing all the time depending on uh, what tiles are coming and what's happening with other players. Allow it a lot. Ra is all about the journey, not about the destination. Number four, what I love about Ra is that it is very balanced and scalable. You might want to skip to number five because now it will become very geeky and nerdy. Ra can be played at two to five player count. Each round you will have that many Ra events and each of them will be advancing the boat until it's the end of the round. In between each of those events, you'll be getting five good tiles. How do we know it? In total, we have 180 action tiles. 30 of them are Ra tiles, so one in six. 6 minus 1 equals 5 good tiles. Per round, it would make it 25 to 45 tiles. And per player, we have 12.5 to 9. Yes, it becomes a little bit more competitive towards the higher player count, but it is nicely balanced by different quantity of suns at different player counts. So we have 4 and 3. 
if we take that into consideration, then the average tiles per sun is around three at all player counts. I believe three is a perfect number for this game. It's not too much, not too little, provides enough options, yet does not create too much complexity, does not lead you into the analysis paralysis, which I believe is very important for the game to be fun. So I love it. Number five, what I love about Ra is that it is very forgiving. In many other games, you would pick a strategy and you have to keep that strategy because if you step out of that, there is a high chance that you will lose. In Ra, you can pick a strategy, it doesn't work out, you pick another strategy, it's fine, you're still successful. And uh, then you can switch again and still have a chance to win. So take it easy, just relax and enjoy because there is not a big deal if you lose something at some point, you can still catch up. So here we are, Ra, the game which at the same time is very simple and can be enjoyed by anyone. But at the same time, it is very complex because it has some hidden mechanics that can be explained by loss aversion bias. And uh, if you know it, you can have fun with that. So anyone can have fun with this game. I highly recommend it. I believe it should become modern classic and each board gamer should own this game. Go for it. Hey, if you are still watching, thank you so much. Are there any other board games that are judged by their cover the same way as I was doing with Ra and uh, do not get enough love from us? Please let me know in the comments. Let's discuss. Thanks again. See you next time.